This video is just a short extract from the entire course. If you wish to see all of the videos from this series at higher quality and in far larger screen size, head over to ifskills.com. There are many built-in functions in the SQL language. Most of those functions are available in PLSQL. There are a few that are only available when using SQL, though. So I want to show you an example of a built-in function that's only available in SQL. And then I want to talk a little bit about some string handling functions. If you know SQL, if you've been studying SQL, a lot of this won't be new to you. I just want to make a refresher because something you'll do in PLSQL very frequently is manipulate strings. So to show our example of something that works in SQL, does not work in PLSQL, we'll do a select decode. So basically, the way a decode works, it's a SQL if. If D equals A, return B, else return C. Well, D doesn't equal A, obviously, so it returns C. We could try to use this in PLSQL. Then we can say function or pseudo column decode may only be used inside a SQL statement. And you'll hit different things fairly rarely, but there are a few things that you can't do. Now, you can actually do a little trick that I see quite often where we have the decoded value. We're going to select our decode into that decoded value and then do the test. So we're going to say select decode. If D equals A, return B, else return C. So our decoded value is saying if decoded value is B, which is what would be returned if they matched, say it match. If it's not B, then it didn't match. So if we ran that, let me look at our dbms output. Make sure that's turned on. Oh, D doesn't equal B, so there's no output. So let me change this to a D. If D equals D, return B. The moon is blue. There we go. So we kind of tricked it by saying, do the select and then do our logic. The thing is, you don't really need to trick it to do it that way. I mean, the most obvious way to do it, you could use a case, you could use an if. This is a simple case, or actually it's a searched case. Case when D equals A, do that. I mean, it achieves the exact same thing. And again, we can change that to a D. And we can see that it worked. So even though you can do something in SQL, or if you don't need to kind of hack at it, if you have native functionality in PLSQL, use the PLSQL. The same thing being, if you're working with data and you can do what you're doing with your data just in SQL, you shouldn't resort to PLSQL. You should stick with SQL. So it's just kind of the flip of that. If there's native functionality, don't try to go to SQL to make it happen. You'll slow things down. Do it with native functionality in PLSQL. And obviously that was a fairly silly case. I mean, my where A equals D return B. But I just want to show you that example, that you will run into things like that, and you'll have those decisions to make. So if you find yourself making that decision, think about it a little bit and see if you can make a different decision. So another area where you'll use SQL functions quite a bit is the conversion. So you convert into a string, convert into a date, convert into a number. I've covered that a lot in the code. We're going to cover it some more as we're actually using it. So I'm not going to go into a lot of details on that. I think I've covered that pretty good. What I do want to explain, though, is some string manipulation. So you can use a substring to return a portion of a string. In this case, I'm saying return the substring of Lewis Cunningham, start at position 2, and return 4. So we start at position 2, which is here, return 4, which is the UIS. Substring takes in as parameters a string, where you want to start, and how many characters you want to return. Something I see people forget when they're doing this is they think it takes the string, where to start, and where to end. And some languages actually do it that way. This language does not. It's where you start and how many positions to return. You can actually start at the rear of the string, the end of the string, by putting a negative. So in this case, I said return starting two from the end and return four. As you can see, there wasn't four to return, so it returned everything to the end. And that's just the way it works. If you remove the final position, it returns to the end. That works on the positive number also. And that's about it for the substrings. You use that fairly often to return a chunk of a string. Next up that I'm going to show is the end string. End string tells you where a substring starts in a string. So in this case, I'm saying for the string Lewis Cunningham, where does ing start? 
So if we look, we can see it's right here. And we can kind of guess what position that is. Or we can run this and see it's at position 11. So if I wanted to substring where ing starts, I would know for my substring to start at position 11 and go for 3. Okay, let's play with this a little bit. Let me clear that out. So in this case, I'm saying, show me the position where n is in this string. Well, we can see there's three n's. So which n is it going to return? It's going to return the very first one. As a matter of fact, that's the equivalent of this, which is also the equivalent of this. You see it returned a 9. So the first or the third parameter is where do you want to start? The second parameter is not like the substring where it was the number of characters to turn. It is the which occurrence do you want to see? So if I started at position 11, remember this one started at 9, start at 11, the next one's going to be 12. So that's the end here. But if I said start at position 1 and return the third occurrence, it returns 12 because that's the third occurrence. And of course, the second occurrence would return the second end. You can also start from the back of the string, again, by doing the negative. So the second is always the second. Let's do the first, which is 12. Coming from this way, the first position is 12. The third occurrence coming from the back is going to be 9. Oop, let me clear that so you can see. It's 9 because it's coming from this direction. So now that we've covered the substring and the end string, let me just kind of give you an example of something that you might see in the real world. So we're declaring a record. It's going to have a location and a prior letter. So this is going to be location and a string, and this is going to be the letter before that location. And really, I'm just doing this as an example. So we're going to create a table of that info. We're going to create a variable using our table of that info. And then we've got a string. This is the same string we were using before, Lewis Cunningham. Now, what I'm going to do is I know there are three in, so I'm just hard coding my one through three. I could have done a count or something. So what I'm going to do is each loop through here for the position i, I'm going to take the in string of the string for in, starting at position one and returning the int occurrence. So the first time through it's the first occurrence, second time through it's the second, third time through it's the third. Now, where it gets interesting is in my prior letter, I'm taking the substring of that string, the info loc minus one. So the v info loc is returning where that string is. The info loc minus one is going to return the prior letter. It's going to be the letter before where that string shows up. And of course, I want the first occurrence of it. Then this loop down here is just going to actually print out the letter just before position x, the loc, is, and then show the letter. Let me go ahead and bring back up my DBMS output. Clear that out. The letter before 9 is u. Yep, yeah, so the first n right before is a u. The letter just before 10 is n. So the second n is 10. So the letter before it is an n. The letter just before 12, which is here, is an i. So you see how that works. By mastering this kind of logic, you can parse just about any kind of string or file you might need to. You're going to have to do this if you're programming in PLSQL or in almost any language. String handling can be a pain, but it's a lesson you need to learn. As an advanced exercise on your own, go ahead and take this text, which is included in the working files for this chapter. Play with the first loop, you know, change your string, maybe go backwards through it, however you want to play with it. Get used to it, see what this is doing. Play with substring and end string. And as a more advanced exercise, go out and Google RPAD. LPAD and replace and see how you could include those strings in this loop. And that's it for this chapter on functions.